Back in the 1950s, most people aren't aware of it, but there was a scientific storm in America all through the late 50s about this thing out there in space because the astronomers were all watching it, and that was back when they weren't afraid to talk about it. It was in the science magazines. I mean, I had a subscription to, like, Popular Science and Health. It was on the front cover of the magazine one day in, like, 1961. And uh, I was really excited when I saw it, because here's this giant red planet on the horizon uh, of the California coast, and a humongous tidal wave coming in towards the coast, and having grew up in the mountains of uh, the Sierras, and this thing in the magazine, it said this tidal wave coming in was going to be at least three miles high, and I went and showed it to everybody in the house, and they laughed, and they said, look, it says right here, there's nothing to worry about, it won't be here for another 50 years. Hey, guess what? That 50 years has came and gone. And uh, this baby's out there in the sky. They've been watching it. I watched it. And I can tell you, this thing has got so much trash coming around it. You know how we live in a solar system? We've got nine planets and a big sun. This right. thing has got seven planets and its own sun. But I believe that instead of having dirt on it like our planet does and water, I think this thing is just a big, uh, bright red orange iron ball because it's giving off all this red iron oxide dust out into the atmosphere. When we saw it at first, it was just a teeny little red speck of, of fuzzy red dust in the distance, but over the years as it went by and we watched it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, about 08, we could see this thing like it was across the street. And we could see that it was a blazing hot ball of fire, giving out sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles in every direction. And you could see the plants circulating it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I really am nervous about. I think this thing's got a planet like ours circling it. This is its own solar system. We're about to have a solar system come through the middle of our solar system. This can't be good. But unfortunately, it looks as though that's what's going to happen. Hopefully nothing in this mess will hit us, even though it does say it will in the Bible. At least it does in my Bible. It says we can expect all kinds of problems. We were looking at asteroids right close to this thing. There's asteroids that are floating around right near the, uh, that are orbiting the, uh, the main sun itself. These things appear to be about 500 miles across. And, and as you go back into the tail, you get into meteorites that go back for millions of miles in the tail. This thing looks like a giant red teardrop-shaped dust cloud. And you can see, once, if, you, if you're able to see it up close like we did, you can see every speck out there. I guarantee you there's trillions of meteorites following this thing. Now, these CIA people that I know say that we're not going to uh, uh, be that close to it when it goes past us. They're saying that in order to attain breakaway speed, when it comes up around the backside of the sun, its speed will at least double, possibly more which will put it here earlier than everybody is saying it will, and uh, that this thing will probably be about 20, mi 20 million miles from us when, when it crosses in front of us. And then as soon as it flips us upside down, we're going to go into its debris field tail and be pelted with uh, meteorites. And, of course, in the Bible it says they will at Talon 70 pounds. So if you've got 70-pound meteorites following like hail, and I can guarantee you they will be falling like hail because there are that many in the tail of this thing. This thing has got a tail loaded with trash. I mean, uh, it's incredible the amount of stuff that's in this thing's tail. And uh, we're going to go right through that tail. And if it doesn't beat everything on the surface of the ground into a flat putty, I don't know what it will take. I tell everybody, you better be at least 20, 30, 40, 50 feet on the ground and have either concrete or stone above you because it'll break through the roof of whatever you've got if you don't. These CIA guys told me that this pole shift will probably happen from start to finish in around 28 minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of warning. When you see that thing out there in the sky, you're going to have to run as fast as you can to your underground facility because this is going to happen so fast. Now, see, here's another thing nobody's talking about. You've got this giant iron planet that they say is 47,000 miles across, getting ready to come up past us, 
And when well, it starts to approach us, it's going to start and have real serious effects. So is it a and planet that, or a failed star? It's not a failed star. It, it, you know, I saw this thing up close. It did not look like a failed star. It looked just like our sun. Right. Okay. The, would you call our sun a failed star? No. Okay. Well, you had said planet. I wasn't sure if it was like a, a failed star brown dwarf or a full sun. So it's a full sun? It's a, it, it looks to me like a miniature sun, just like the one we have. The only difference is, see, is our sun is uh, giving off flames and stuff. And this one's doing the same thing as it, but it's giving off this red iron oxide cloud of dust around it. And until it got close, we couldn't even tell what was in there. We knew we could see it was hot. And it looked like it was just a dull red when we were first able to discern it through the red cloud. But as it approached, it started to become more apparent that this thing is just orange hot. I mean, to tell how hot it is, I was told that it was, they estimated between 5 and 10 million degrees. But, you know, I don't really know, uh, you know, uh, if that's right or not. I mean, it's got to be pretty hot because it's, it's sending all of this red iron oxide dust out into space around it. Right. And uh, it's got this enormous, and I mean enormous, the, at least... 50 or 100,000 miles on each side of it, this red dust cloud that goes all the way around it. I know when we were watching it, as it started to make the upward swing to approach behind our sun, it was amazing. The red dust cloud settled down. Instead of being round, it started to settle down into a V, like wings, upside-down wings. Right. And I thought, boy, I wonder if that's where the ancient Sumerians got the idea this thing had wings, because... You know, centrifugal force is a funny thing. When it yeah. comes back up around the planet, when we see it in the sky, my guess is it's going to look like it's got wings because centrifugal force is going to be pulling the uh, red iron oxide dust and particles uh, uh, out to one side. And then uh, as it starts to climb out and go away from us, listen, I was told that this thing's magnetic field is going to be so strong, anybody that does not have a padded lead helmet to wear will have their brain gutted for everything they ever knew, and they'll be a complete raving moron after this thing passes. They'll lose their, they won't know, they'll pee in their pants. They won't have a clue what's going on, because this thing will gut their brain. And, it, and you know, I was reading a deal in my Bible. It says that uh, after this happens that nobody will uh, care because they won't be able to remember it. Well. Of course, uh, I was told by somebody the reason that that is is because the electromagnetic field from this thing will be so strong because, see, as it comes up underneath of us, it's going to start and pull us toward it. And then, just like a pair of big magnets, all of a sudden it's going to lock onto us. And when it does, it's going to be like the jolly green giant kick the earth in the ass. It's going to send a jolt 500 to 1,000 foot high. This is what I'm told, 500 to 1,000 foot high shock waves all the way around planet Earth. They'll be so bad that in a lot of areas that don't have good solid soil, it'll fluff it so badly that you'll practically be like you're standing in quicksand. And that this thing's magnetic field will literally gut your brain of everything. And so you may want to uh, give some thoughts to getting you some sheet lead, build you a little... Uh, lead helmet to wear, you know, uh, like a little motorcycle helmet to protect your entire brain and, and the back of your neck so that that way this can't happen because, you know, if these guys are right about this, and I'm pretty sure they are because uh, I know for a fact they know what they're talking about when they say stuff. And uh, so, you know, and, and it does sound reasonable to me, knowing what I do about electromagnetic energy, that this could happen. And it very easily could gut everybody's brain for everything they ever knew, and they'll stand there and pee in their pants and go, gee, what was that? And wow. that's if they still know how to talk. And there won't be any doubt in anybody's mind because this thing's going to look like a big red dragon exactly like all the ancient Sumerians and the Chinese and all the rest of them that had documented this thing's passing before. Uh, it didn't look like a white ball or a snow cloud or nothing. It looked like a big red iron oxide dust cloud with a superheated star in the middle of it. And, I mean, you know, and that's what we've seen. Uh, so, you know, I don't care what anybody else says. There's a possibility. There's more than one thing out there. You know, I watched it through the Hubble Space Telescope, 
And when this thing looked like it was uh, across the street, uh, the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it, and that was the end of any transmissions we had to watch. And, uh, and we know that the Hubble, in order to be in the shadow of the Earth, had to be at an angle, and so that meant it was looking downward, uh, right. and this thing was coming up underneath of us, and uh, uh, I tell you the honest to God truth, I personally think this thing is real close to us right now, but, you know, that's just my general feeling that, uh, you know, and I'm a pretty psychic guy, uh, I have the feeling that this thing is right close by and that we're going to see it any time. I mean, I've been doing everything I could do to get prepared for it to... I'm, I'm really worried about what Jesus says, you know, when the fig tree is putting on its leaves, know that summer is here and I'm at your door. And, and that worries me more than probably anything I've read in the Bible about this whole thing, the parable of the fig tree, because everything seems to be in place for this thing's arrival. And, and the bad thing is, he says, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. Well, it does also say in the Bible that I'm going to make the sun go down at noontime in Jerusalem. Okay, if that's the case, there's only one thing that will make the sun go down. Down. Not hit the horizon, down. Go down at noontime, and that's if the planet experiences a pole shift. Okay, uh, planet- I, got, I got a quick question that you can probably answer really quickly and then continue from the chat room. Uh, wants to know if you're talking about Planet X or Elenin, and I, I don't think, I, I've never thought Elenin is Planet X. Uh, Terrell's pretty yeah. pretty well, stuck on that, but is. I think Elenin is a result of it. It's a comet that's been it, kicked it, in. Elenin is extinction level event. Nebiru is near. Right. Does that explain it? Yeah. Okay. Because listen, they've known about this thing forever, and I mean they've known about it forever. I mean, if if I read about it in a science magazine in 1961, that tells you that I mean it's only 1,800 years away. How could they not be able to see it when it came around the backside of the last sun and headed this way? Right. Right. You have to know they've been watching it because. If you, you know, Carl Sagan was showing stuff that they took with their old telescopes that was billions and billions of, of miles away, and this thing's only 1,800 years away, well, and by 1930, it was only 70 years away. You know, we do estimate that this thing, let me give you a thing, maybe you can figure out your own timeline. We estimated that this thing is traveling around 3,500 miles an hour, okay? Okay. That was our estimate of its speed. Now, it has been picking up speed, and that's the reason why we think it's going to arrive early, because when it comes around the backside of the sun, it's got to double that speed in order to attain breakaway speed to leave the sun and not wind up orbiting it. It's never orbited the sun in the past that we know of, so that means that it's going to have to attain breakaway speed to head back out into space. Now, you look at the NASA videos, photos, and all this other crap those morons put on the Internet. This thing is coming in. It's going to, as soon as it goes around the top of the sun, it's going to go pew, back out into space. Right. And it's going to do this really fast. When it goes past us, it's going to go past us so fast that we'll almost have no time to get ready. That's my opinion. But, you know, just drawing it out on paper a few times and thinking about it, and I went, you know, if this thing picks up enough speed to make breakaway speed, then that means it's going to come past us. You know, this thing, according to uh, what I was told, is that this thing is approximately 47,000 miles in diameter, uh, you know, four or five times the size of the Earth, and it'll come past us, and we won't have a lot of warning, and we won't get to see it in the sky until it's on us. I think the NASA timeline is completely off. I think this thing is going to arrive much earlier than they say it is. You know, I know they're saying October, but, uh, you know, if you look at the, you know, now, I was told that the poles are not shifting at 42 miles a year. They're shifting at 42 miles a day. And the reason is is because this planet is rolling over to face this thing. Now, when it goes by, it's not going to push our north pole away. It's going to grab our southern pole with its northern pole. And it's going to be like somebody kicked this planet in the ass. That earthquake that it talks about in uh, Revelations, uh, when the opening of the sixth seal comes, from what I've been told, that's very accurate because that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be a massive earthquake when it locks onto us. As it goes past us, we're going to follow it right upside down. 
the oceans are just going to be roaring from pole to pole, as you could well guess they would, because if you take a plant that's 7,000 miles across and roll it upside down in 30 minutes, you're going to have some real serious problems with wind and water.